Welcome back, everyone. This is Akinar here with more Elden Ring, where last time we started our journey as the Tarnished, and we are slowly but surely making our way toward the Castle Stormvale. There is so much to explore. This world is just so massive and overwhelming already, but we're going to try to keep making our way through here. We have been introduced to our steed. We have our trusty torrent, some really cool horns, and the ability to double jump, and engage in horseback riding combat, which is amazing to have in a Dark Souls game. And we've also been introduced to Melina, the Finger Maiden. So we have the ability to level up with our Fire Keeper once again. And we also apparently serve somebody called Two Fingers. I don't know if this is one person or two people or whoever it is. Uh, we also came across a witch, Rena, had a really cool Two-Face thing going on. And we got our butt whipped by the Tree Sentinel who I think I was calling the Tree Warden. All kinds of fun stuff happening here. And I wanted to get, get started in this area that we uh, kind of explored a little bit last time, the uh, the ruins here. Let's go ahead and, what is the best way to dismount if I want to? It's just triangle, okay, cool. So we can get off with triangle, dismount, and I wanted to try to take on this enemy over here. I've already started been clearing out this area a little bit, some of the enemies that were here before. And in the process, I noticed that there was an item here that we missed. Let's pick this up. We have a map. There we go. Okay, so that I think is our first map fragment. So now things should look fairly different. Look at that. Okay, so now, just like we would have had in Breath of the Wild, we actually now have revealed a segment of the map. Limgrave West has been revealed to us. Now we get to take a look and see all the little details here. Oh, okay. Wow. Now the now the map is really zooming in and out. Okay. So this is just one segment of Limgrave, the western section, but we got started down here. Oh man, there's so much to explore. Holy shit. Okay. We will look at this map in a little bit more detail later. What I want to try to do first is figure out if we can take on this guy um, that we we got the drop on this guy last time. There's some other enemies around as well, but um, how do we want to handle this? We were able to we were able to get close over here. Maybe we'll clear out some of the other enemies before we take on acquire materials. Oh, we got a smoldering butterfly so you can get those from these fires. Interesting. Okay, there's so much to pick up. This is a new one as well, Herba. Herba. <laughs> All right. I did pick up in the process, as I was making my way through and killing some of these enemies, I did find a new shield. So why don't we actually go ahead and equip that? Because I think it might be an upgrade. So I did find this shield. I can't equip it yet, though. I need more strength. Okay, I have a brass shield, which does give 100% physical damage reduction. It is also much higher in stability, but we can't wield it just yet. So that is down the road. Should we use our bow, I wonder? Should we just use the bow to... Hmm, how do we want to deal with these guys? Let's take this guy out. The... the, the... The puzzle that I'm currently trying to solve is figuring out how to deal with enemies that have these big shields because it doesn't seem like we have a way to kick. And I'm not exactly sure what is supposed to be the preferred method of breaking guard. Get this guy on our case over here. So the enemies don't immediately aggro. It's like you need to kind of... Wait, why is that wolf's eyes glowing? So you can kind of attract their attention. It feels a little bit like Sekiro in that you can maybe get them in what would be the um, the yellow awareness mode in Sekiro. And they're not fully attacking you yet. So that might be a good way to kind of draw out enemies one at a time and start to clear out the area without bringing the entire group down on you. Can you also sneak up on doggos? Apparently, they are not as aware as the Sekiro dogs. And now, is this guy coming to check out? Did he hear that? Okay, didn't quite get the backstab there, but it's no problem. Then beast bones. 
All right, we're working our way through here and trying to whittle down the horde before we take on the big boy. There's somebody else nearby. Yeah, I thought I heard somebody else patrolling. They definitely come to investigate when there are when there is combat going on. If they are if they are near enough, close enough. But there are also ways, it seems, to abuse the, the AI. It is still not the most observant AI in the world. Let's see if we can get you. And we are far enough away. Ooh, I did not see this before. There is a passageway down here. Oops, hold on. Did we get into combat? I think we did. Oops. I did not mean... I wanted to get a backstab on this guy. Okay, so we're going to have to... He fell down. What I'd like to do maybe is switch to two-handed because I think this was the message. The message from the tutorial area that was trying to tell us about shield enemies was that we wanted to use two-handed to kind of break guard more often. Ooh, did he get a guard counter on us? Is that what he just did? Hmm. Hmm. We also have our skill that I keep forgetting to use. The rolls do feel pretty nice. It looks like you, d you do have quite a bit of... Um... What, did I do that or did he do that? I'm having a little trouble just dissecting whether I'm getting the guard counter off or he is. Let's drink. Okay, so the, the sword skill on the Uchi Katana is actually pretty, pretty legit. It has uh, some nice countering ability there that we were able to take advantage of. So maybe we'll think about reapportioning our flasks at some point to give ourselves a little more focus points. Okay, feels good to get the victory against that guy. Some Godric soldier gauntlets. We have quite a bit of reading as well that I want to do. I want to check out some of the items that we've picked up that we didn't get to see last time. I do want to quickly look, though, at this little staircase that I had totally missed before. Where the hell does this go? Oh, boy. This is this is one of the things that potentially... Well, potentially. One of the things... Oh, okay. When we have uh, an open world like this, there are going to be caves and grottos to explore, but apparently also treasure chests. Adding skills. With a whetstone knife, you can use Ashes of War to grant your armaments new skills at Sites of Grace. You can change the skills on your weapons. An armament can only have one skill. Any skill it previously had will be removed. Wow, that is a new idea that I would that it would never have occurred to me. Oh my god, the possibilities. An armament's type determines what skills it can have. Some special armaments have unique skills and cannot be granted new ones. Now, where are you getting these skills from? That's what I want to know. Are you like... My mind immediately goes to like World of Warcraft disenchanting another item in order to get or harvest its skill to give to another weapon. Ashes, oh, okay, Ashes of War. That's what it is, Ashes of War. So, so it looks like that's what we picked up is an Ash of War Storm Stomp. I'm reading it behind the message here. Let's go through the other message, adding affinities. This is a lot like Sekiro. There was a period at the beginning of Sekiro where you had so much knowledge that was being added. And, they, and, and while we have a lot more experience with this kind of a game, having played so many Dark Souls games before, there's clearly a ton of new mechanics that we're gonna have to get used to. So also with a whetstone knife, you can use Ashes of War to grant affinities to your armaments at Sites of Grace. Very similar, but this time you get affinities. What, what is an affinity? This way you can alter an armament's attack affinity, boost attribute scaling, and more. Oh, so this sounds like um, instead of, what was it called before in Dark Souls when you would give, like, infusion? That's what this sounds like. 
An armaments type determines what affinities it can have. Some special armaments like those with unique skills cannot be granted new affinities. I think. Might have to dig into this a little bit more. But Ash of War, Storm Stomp. And there is our Whetstone Knife. That probably is a key item, if I had to guess. It is a key item. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Right, is there any... I do. Let's go through some of these items here and check out some of the lore, whatever tidbits we can glean. So this is map of the western region of Limgrave. The, oh, I have no idea what that word is. Demesn of Limgrave, far south of the of the Erd Tree, is bordered to the northwest by the cliffs of Stormvale, and under its ever clouded skies roll the great steps of the Pale Lands. Cool. Smithing stones. Just seeing if they're kind of, some of these are going to have, I think, very, like a lot of these crafting materials, it looks like you're just going to have very uninteresting descriptions. But we'll go through some of them just to see if there's any, what looks like uh, root resin. I don't even remember where we picked this up. Resin secreted from the roots of the great tree. The roots of the great tree were once linked to those of the air tree, or so they say. And it is for this reason, catacombs are built around great tree roots. Okay, so I really don't know now whether the big tree that we see, is that the air tree or is it the great tree? Don't know yet. Lump of flesh. Right, we got this gold-tinged excrement before. Someone's excrement. It has a golden tinge. Checks out. Gold-tinged excrement, excrement is a highly stable substance. It doesn't dry out, nor does it lose its customary warmth or scent for better or for worse it remains as it is there you go roa fruit airdly flower okay as we're seeing on most of these very very standardish descriptions obviously these are all new items to me but you know herbs are herbs Smoldering butterflies or butterflies like it kind of there's this I, I the, the only really open world game that I have played like this is Breath of the Wild. So that's where most of my comparisons are going to reside. And it does feel like this is heavily influenced by that. I've not yet played Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know if I'm going to have the chance to play it. We'll see. But we are playing Elden Ring right now. Let's check out Ash of War Storm Stomp. This Ash of War grants an armament, the quality affinity and the following skill. Storm Stomp, one of the skills that can channel the Tempests of Stormvale. Stomp hard on the ground to kick up a momentary storm. Usable on all melee armaments. Storm Stomp. And it gives the quality affinity. Is that related to, like, the quality build? So you, like, get better scaling from if you're going strength and dexterity, aka quality build? It's kind of funny if that's they just decided to go with the quality build. Um, just put that directly into the game. Canonize it as part of the Elden Ring lingo. Uchi Katana, a katana with a long single edged curved blade, unique weapon wielded by the samurai from the land of reeds. Cool, cool, cool. I think we have read that before. We just we don't we also picked up this war pick. I don't remember exactly where we got it from, but it's a battle hammer with a hard protruding beak. Pickaxe designed for combat. Simple but highly effective. Oh, its skill is kick. Push an enemy back with a high kick. Effective against enemies who are guarding. And can break a foe's stance. Whoa. Well, holy shit. Okay, we have to try that because <laughs> we're, we're recording this now on YouTube. But back in the day, uh, when I first started Dark Souls 1, when we were streaming it on Twitch, we, um, accidental kicks were the theme of the playthrough. And, uh, because that was the only type of kick that I was capable of doing. Never on purpose, always accidental. And, um, and we made an emote out of it. So we have to try, now that we are in Elden Ring, we have to at least try and see what a kick looks like. We have to two-hand, right? And then, there you go. Does not consume FP, looks like. So it's much easier to execute. And now we have an option when we are... Maybe I'll just keep this equipped. It doesn't... 
put us over. We're still medium load, it looks like. I'm guessing when we get to 70%. 70% was the, the number in Dark Souls 3. That probably puts us over medium load. So we can afford, I think, to keep this on our bar for now. And maybe when we run into, we run into some tough enemies that like to turtle on us. Throw the kick at them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. Okay, cool. I think we've basically cleared the place out. There's a couple guys over here. There's also something very bright and glowy over here. What is this? Another... Oh, it's just another... Um, another. I'm going to keep calling them bonfires for now. Sight of Grace, I think. I had to remember what the name was. We can, do, can we do this on horseback as well? It looks like we do have to dismount in order to touch Grace. But we'll grab our save site here. It is so nice that we have fast travel from wherever we are. We do not have to make it back. We don't have to. We don't need a homeward bone. We don't need an aged feather or anything like that. We can just warp around at will. Very, very nice. Let's just take out this guy over here and then we will. I guess there's just a couple guys. So we'll try to. The shield guys are tend to be the more problematic ones. So let's. Take you out. Ooh. Wait. What did I do there? Oh, did I get a flask back just now? I think that's what that animation was. Did I do a kick? I did something there that looked like a kick. I'm not sure, though. I'm also still not sure why the hell I have a graveyard symbol above where it says parry. One of these things in a blind playthrough that... You all will know, you all will well know the answer to, but I'm going to be sitting here puzzled for a while until I figure it out. I feel like it had something to do with my steed, with Torrent dying on me at one point. But, uh, but we still seem to be able to summon him, so I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what we are going to do, there is so much to explore in this direction, but we are going to kind of follow the... Well, we have a few... <laughs> we actually have some, some souls to spend now, so maybe we will do a little bit of leveling up first. But I want to keep heading kind of in the main, let's follow the direction of these, these sites of grace that are pointing us toward the castle and see if we can follow that main thread for now. We will level up. Was there anything else that I wanted to do? I actually wanted to, after we level up, let's go back and we'll talk with a couple of our NPCs that we've met before. Let's level up. It is interesting that they give you the option to pass time. I don't know what advantage that might be, but, well, I mean, there's going to be certain things that happen only at certain times a day, right? That's what it's going to be. I just don't know what those are yet. So we'll leave that be for now. Let's try to level our strength, I think, because strength gets us better shields. <laughs> and uh, while we are learning the ropes here in Elden Ring, we, we are going to try to get the best shield that we can get. So let's get to 16 strength so we can wield that brass shield. See, seems like a good idea. Something to aim for. So that's what we will do. And we're going to... We don't have to warp from these. But I noticed that we do have this new ability now. The Ashes of War. That would let us apply Storm Stomp to a weapon. We'll think about that. I don't know that I want to apply that just yet. But let's go to our map. And um, head back to the beginning. And talk to Vare, I think. White Mask Vare. It does show the name of the NPCs on the map. And let's get an, uh, an update from you and see what you have to say. Now that we are no longer maidenless. It's time you set off, I should think. Oh, this is not new, is it? Stormvale, okay. If you seek I'm not maidenless anymore. Stop calling me that. I'm not warping. Okay, this is going to take a little while to get used to. We don't warp. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. There was a new option here. Talk to Melina. Is that because we came back to this bonfire? Well, let's try to do that. We don't... I, I kept... I, I'm going to... For a while, I'm going to keep sitting at the, the sites of grace in order to warp when I can just do that from the map. But in this case, it turned out to be revealing a new option to us. This, this is so cool how she appears. is the grace of the earth tree. This light... Once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Also, I hear you can see them, can't you? 
the rays of grace that guide you through your burden. What happened to your eye? How did you lose your eye? The rays of grace, though, we are going to try and follow those to our main objective. Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale is a shard bearer, a demigod, who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pack, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. <laughs> Me too. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we're fit for that. We did make a pact with her, apparently, where um, she's helping us level up, but we're also helping get her to the air tree. I think that was the deal. Upon so it looks like... The cliff, okay. It's cool. Than the Elden as an ally by yeah. To face the it, I noticed there was a little highlight there next to the talk to melon option that i think was indicating that we still had new dialogue and then once that's exhausted that goes away okay cool excellent i love how she just kind of appears and disappears into the ether that's so cool so now we go to our uh let's go over here to the church and just talk to the merchant maybe we'll even buy something we have a few more runes to spend i don't think we have any um titanite shards to level up our weapon. Wait, weren't you? Well, you're back. Let's see what else we might buy. We could buy the cracked pot. It looks like you sell three of these for 300 each. Or we could just get the torch. You know what? Let's get the torch. And maybe we can get one of these notes. Flask of Wondrous Physique, Waypoint Ruins. Let's check this out. And we'll get the torch. Spend all we got. Goodbye. I think we have some stuff to sell. What is it? As well. Which rhymes? I've been making too many un un unintentional rhymes here. We could sell and get six hundred. Let's hold on to those for now. Let's hold on to those for now. Um, let's equip our torch. I I'm so used to pressing the, I don't know what it's called on the PS4 controller, the middle button. Um, the one that in this game brings up our map, but in um, Dark Souls 3 was our pause button and Sekiro as well. So I got to get used to pressing the other button to the right. Let's equip our torch. Put that here. And we're still medium load, so that's good. Let's de-equip this for now and put the our Estus Flask, our Flask of Crimson Tears over in the um, the number one slot. What is this here? Talisman. Is this going to be for spell casting? Maybe? If and when we get to that? Let's check item crafting. Is there anything interesting that we can make that we would want to make? We can make a Roa, a Roa Raisin. We can make a bunch of these, and this is what we restore Torrent's HP with. So let's actually make a few of those. Make like five of them. Seems good. Prism stones. Don't know that I want to be making those <laughs> just yet. Maybe they have some other use to them. Shines with colored light when placed serving as a guide. Yeah, I don't know. If they're like the other prism stones where they just die, they disappear when you die. Still going to be pretty useless. Doesn't, we're not able to make the fire pots yet, but that's because we just don't have a cracked pot. We could make one of them because we have a smoldering butterfly and a mushroom. We'll think about that for later. Okay. There was the key item that we just picked up. It was not a key item. What, ki what kind of item is it? That, um, it was a scroll that we bought. Was it just in our normal consumables, or... Where did that go, actually? Hmm, hold on a second here. Info? It does get added to info. I see. N flask of Wondrous Physique. Okay. A Flask of Wondrous Physique... I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
still remains in the Third Church of America, north of the Mistwood. Cross the highway bridge and follow the animal trail north. Okay, no idea where that is. Right now, that sounds like it will be a task for later. Right now, let's get back on track and keep going from the gate front toward the castle. Making our way toward the castle. Because that is our main objective, and then we can think about... We can think about... Um, Fully exploring this region, which I will probably be doing a lot of the full comprehensive exploration off camera, or at least, um, you know, I'll be recording and documenting as need be, because otherwise if we, there's no way that we can exhaustively. Oh boy. Oh boy. I was not ready for this. I was not ready for this. Is he coming my way? I also was not, I was kind of like distracted by the guys I noticed firing arrows at me. And then we had another one of these guys. Um, I think this is where we make a run for it, don't you think? Don't you agree we just kind of make a run for it here, y'all? There's some items to pick up there, but we are just going to kind of like just blaze on through here. We'll maybe hack at you a little bit, but uh, we're just going to, you know... Y'all have fun. <laughs> Y'all have fun. We're just making our way through. Don't mind me. Let's pick this up. A golden seed. Okay, that was good. We need to be picking up items because there could be golden seeds laying around. Now that we are at the other end of this, hmm, I do kind of want to take that guy on because the other one wasn't too bad. Let's just see if there's another save point. Let's see how far it is to the next save point. We'll keep our eyes peeled here. I'm, I can see it already. Oh my god, what the hell? Did those wolves just, like, fly? Did they just hover in? That was crazy. <laughs> I, there is just, we're gonna have to keep our eyes peeled upward in order to be ready. What in the world was that jump? That was, that looked so funny. The wolf jumping up onto the Oh, we, I forgot to remember, we have a double jump. We can probably do a lot more parkour riding horseback than I would imagine. Okay, I was distracted because I saw the next sight of grace here, and then, oh my god, where did those wolves even come from? Jesus Christ. There is stuff just waiting to drop on your head. Be ready. But we have another save point here. Let's grab this. I'm, this is probably... Um, if I was playing this game by myself, there's no doubt that I would be much more comprehensive and taking my time going through, but it's just, we're not going to be able to do that on a YouTube playthrough, and uh, it's fine. We're going to have a lot of fun still. Stormhill Shack, and we have found somebody. What is, you are Little Red Riding Hood? Take a closer look here. It, it very much looks like Little Red Riding Hood. Can't really get... Let's see if I can go back over here. I just want to get a, see if I can get a look at her face. But I don't know that we're going to be able to get low enough. Also, how do I zoom in? There we go. And barely see. Maybe we can see her face when we talk to her. Let's go ahead and talk. Everyone's been grafted. Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me. They fought for me. Only to have their arms taken, their legs taken, even their heads taken, taken and stuck to the spider. Did you know, if you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid? It's quite the lark when you think about it. Quite the lark. Okay, so this is what we saw at the very beginning, isn't it? The grafted scion, which I, I thought looked like a spider. And um, as I looked, I, I skimmed through some of the footage that I had recorded and I saw that there was indeed like a person or a body that looked like it had been grafted onto this thing. So we've got a, a, a grafting situation going on here. Don't know what that's all about, but Godric, the grafted, seems like he's involved in that as well. So we have a new emote sitting sideways. There we go. Okay. And let's talk You're some more. You're all on your own, are you? 
and heading to Stormvale Castle. Enticed by the one in the white mask, I suppose. Vare? Oh, you've come to be one with the spider. I don't know about well, that. That makes us two peas in a pod. I don't know if I, I signed up for that. Courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Or legs. Or I your would, head. I would think it's a little more I than want scary. To be like everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven. A craven, huh? Oh, I know. Can you take this little one along with you? We got another set of ashes. Spirit jellyfish ashes. Okay. The poor thing deserves someone braver than myself. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. It'll be glad of your company, I think. The little one. Huh. Let's check that out. Another set of ashes. Spirit jellyfish ashes. Remains in which spirits yet dwell. A floating spirit that illuminates its surroundings, prone to tears. The jellyfish girl searches for her distant home. Is that what we're... That's who we're talking to here? The jellyfish girl? Will bravely spew poison at foes on her summoner's behalf. It seems her name is... Aurelia? <laughs> there was a baseball player named Rich Aurelia. I think that's exactly how he spells it, too. So you are going to be Aurelia. Nice to meet you, Aurelia. And thank you for the ashes. It was a pleasure to see you. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them. And that, despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang of this whole pain thing, you know? Hmm. It was a pleasure to see you. Okay. Oh, can you pass on and tell them I love that and find again? You're willing Whoop. to make me a chrysalid. Whoa, how did that happen? I'm still a milksop craven. I can't even govern myself to step beyond the bounds of this ward. Please. You're only wasting your strength. Is that because we jumped? Did I like jump on her? There was like an uh, an aura around her that looked like a poison aura, and I wasn't sure why that triggered along with that dialogue, but I can only imagine it was because I was like skipping through the dialogue so quick and then I jumped. I don't know. Don't know what happened there. I'm gonna grab this uh, Roa fruit. The, the little subtly ever so more colorful parts of the environment that you can just harvest. Oh, there's an item up here. Let's get this. Stone Sword Key. Oh, wait a second. This is... This is the item that wakes up those... What were they called again? The Imp Statues. Yeah. The one that we saw back in the... Uh, the, the Cave of Knowledge? Or next to the Cave of Knowledge? Yeah. Breaks the seal on Imp Statues, but remains embedded in the statue after use, meaning it can only be used once as an item. Think well before using one. Okay. Okay. Well, I only know one place to use this so far, but we'll hold on to it for now and see if there are others that uh, will, will be popping up. We'll go ahead and just grab the fruit over here because it's in the in my line of sight. Although I could be doing this on horseback, which is what I need to get in the habit of, of doing here. Okay. Now, the, the ray of grace, or whatever it's called, is pointing in this direction. Let's look at our map. So, okay, so it's pointing directly, I think. There must be a save point up here, probably. But we're, we're going to have to make our way around the road here. Oh, man, there is so much to this. It looks like there might be m two different ways, or maybe even three different ways to get into the castle. This is the one I think we're aiming for, but there might be one... Oh, this bridge looks broken, huh? Making me think of DS3. The bridge leading up to Lothric. This is so neat. Oh, I love this, man. I, I am so hyped that we are finally playing Elden Ring. The game is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so interested to know more about our situation as the Tarnished. The um, I did I did rewatch the opening cutscene. 
The roly-poly sheep are also cracking me up. I want to know what the hell is going on. Who trained these sheep to do this? Whose idea was it to have roly-poly sheep? But the uh, the opening of the game, the tarnished, and uh, and it looked like they were essentially undead because they were they were there was something about rise from the dead, ye tarnished or something. Ye who were once dead. Can I pick that up, please? Runes. Oh, we got a, a golden seed, right? We got a golden seed. That's what we need to be doing. Hold on here. Hold on here. We can do that at the bonfire, correct? Flasks. Let's go. Add charge to flask. Hell yeah. Um, I will quickly just read the... We'll, we'll be thorough here on the item descriptions. I do like to scour item descriptions as much as possible, so let's just make sure about this and, uh, and get the whatever lore tidbits that we can. A golden seed found at the base of an illusory tree. An illusory tree. When the Elden Ring was shattered, these seeds flew from the Erd Tree. Erd Tree. Scattering across the various lands as if life itself knew that its end had come. Why was it shattered? Okay, well, let's get our additional flask. The question is, do we want that flask? To be crimson or cerulean? Was that the other one? We might want to do this. Because the weapon skill on the... Hmm. We'll keep it here for now. Five seems like a nice number to have for our flasks. We'll, we'll get the, uh, the DS1 starting number. And uh, we'll roll with that for now. There's more to talk with Melina. I feel like at one of these sites of grace, the talk to Melina option was not available. So I don't know why it's available at some and not others. Or maybe I wasn't noticing the option before. But let's talk to her because it looks like she's got new dialogue. Me. I'm searching for my purpose given to me by my mother inside the earth tree. Hmm. For the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless, there is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the finger maiden, yet can offer no guidance. I am no maiden. My purpose was long ago lost. Hmm. So she's saying she's not really a maiden? But her mother was or is inside the air tree? Oh, can we not speak to her again? I guess we can't speak to her anymore. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, I'm going to still say that you're a maiden. You're, you're maybe selling yourself a little bit short. Or you're humble. Burned and bodiless. Interesting. Okay, let's get on with the show here. Let's, um... Let's get uh, back on the horse, literally, and head back up the hill here. Maybe we'll take a little bit of a look around. We'll just give a look. It is so stormy. The 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 dynamic nature of the uh, environment. It's uh, not just the time of day, but the weather. It's it's so reminiscent of uh, of Breath of the Wild, but it's it's it feels like it's taken to an even more subtle level. Like it just it just happens so smoothly. I love it. So that path heads on down over here. Okay. Heartbroken Maiden. Wait, is that talking about... That's talking about the girl in the Red Hood, right? So many new people. So many new people to... Um, to learn. To be introduced to. Where was that group of enemies that I saw before? Can we just mow them down? Or are they going to be problematic? They're going to be problematic if I just run right into them. Okay. That was not um, ideal. So this guy we could probably do a guard counter on. I need to not die as well. 
We did do the guard counter, but we didn't get the repose. We got to work on getting that done. So we ran into the group. That's just my inexperience with the horse. And it seems like that is the big downside is once you once you get off, once you once you lose all your momentum and you come to a standstill, you are such a sitting duck. Got some foot soldier gauntlets. I think we gained back another flask there. There's there's the animation that we're getting similar to DS3 where we could um, have restored a flask. Although we did, didn't we? Because we already drank a flask. Now, I'm going to need to, if I want to bring back my horse, did my, did my horse die? My horse did not die, I don't think. It just, like, despawned. So you can just get, like, knocked off your horse, I guess, without it dying. Okay. Learning, learning, learning. All the ins and outs here. The other thing I have to remember is you've got this strong attack option on either side. Like a, sl a s uh, what is it, a, a sweeping slash back and forth. It is very difficult to see right now with this uh, storm going on. Pick up the row of fruits around here. What is this? Goblin? Okay. Ooh, so we did get something from our treasure goblin this time. This was not just a, a flask goblin. Ash of War Wild Strikes. Okay, we'll check that out eventually. Do I want to take on these enemies? Do I want to take them on on horseback? One of the options I do have is I have my, um, my bow, right? Which maybe is something I should be... I only have 17 arrows. That's kind of the problem. Also, my camera lock has some ideas about who it wants to lock onto. So if I do decide to... Um, that's not the button I want. Man, there's so many of these guys. How do, how do I... Um... Oh my god, that is not very... What in the world is that aiming? Okay, so the, the arrow aiming is not... Okay, wow. Um... I'm starting to feel like this might be the game where I am just running past shit. Horsey? Oh my god. There is a, a ballista. Holy shit. As much as possible, we might be just trying to run by shit. Oh, we have the, the barrier there. The barrier that tells us this. You cannot... My god, I do not have my shield. Dude. Losing camera lock. Okay. <laughs> this might be the general strat, is if I do want to fully explore these areas, then I'm going to run. Peepo run or peepo ride. To the back of the line. Get to the back. Ah, uh, you can strafe and do the backstab. That is a thing still. Good, good, good. Because... Can I actually use this? That's not what I meant to do. Okay, because it sure seems like it is going to be a headache to try to just slowly, one at a time, take on uh, every single enemy as you're going through here. So it might be we take on a whole new identity. Akinar is normally known for slow, methodical, take your time, going through every little square inch of everything as you explore. And that's definitely what I did in Breath of the Wild. But this game, <laughs> it's the pressure of recording a series. You, you, you don't want to be boring people to death as you are just, maybe, maybe some of you would find it interesting, slowly scouring over every single square inch of the area. But for now, we're going to keep pressing forward to the main objective. Let's see if we can level up. We need to pop a little over 100 souls, which I can do from the menu, correct? I, or I can do from going to here. And let's do one of these. And that gives us 200. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And we will level up. Get ourselves another point in strength as we get closer to being able to use that new shield. So we will do that. And also giving ourselves probably more weapon options as we go forward. I'm seeing that there is a statue here. Oh, there is a summon sign here, isn't there? Who is the, the summon? 
Sorcerer. It's not Roger, but I might call you Roger because otherwise it's Roger. You're Roger. We're not going to summon the cooperator. A summon sign, though, and a um, what are these called? Statues of Merica. We got a boss fight, don't we? OK, we, we spend our souls. Time to take on a boss. Maybe, maybe question mark. I think it's a boss time. Hey, watch who you call foul. Mm-hmm. You know where it is. Emboldened Ooh. by the flame of ambition. Wow! Look at this guy. Look at that staff. You got a little mold on your face, though, dude. And uh, some horns that you may want to uh, trim. I like the subtitle on the grunt there. That was nice. Great entrance. Someone must extinguish thy flame. Let it be Margit the Fell. Okay, Margit the Fell Omen. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Ooh, what in the world was that? Oh, he has like a scorpion tail. Holy shit, okay. So he had like some sort of faith? Like, holy looking blade? That's a cool trick. And then he threw it like a fucking shuriken. Okay, this guy, Margit. That is a quick, it feels, it feels reminiscent of, um, um, who's the guy in DS3 that I'm thinking of? Pontiff? That little magic short sword that was so quick. Oh, what was that? We bled him, didn't we? What the fuck? Warrior blood must truly run Uther Lightbringer? What the hell? Bro, he's got all kinds of light weapons. Okay, what was that combo? Alright. <laughs> it is so fun again seeing you died. There's just something about seeing you died that feels... It feels cozy in some ways. <laughs> Dude, there's a Pontiff, uh, I called him Pontiff Sullivan. I know everybody calls him Pontiff Sullivan. But that was the vibe that he was given off there. But he had so many versions. He had the little, the, the short sword, and then the big, I mean, kind of a Thor hammer, but I'm thinking of Uther from World of Warcraft. Holy shit. That was awesome. And then the, uh, the longer sword as well. Okay, do we want to change anything up here? Um, maybe we can try some guard counters? And see if those have uh, some effectiveness. I don't know if stance is going to be a thing against bosses. That's a thing. I, I, this, this stance mechanic is something I'm very interested to explore. We have different ways that we're supposed to be able to break the stance, like with jump attacks and charge attacks. We also got a bleed effect, though. That is our Uchi Katana. I think that we got a big old boost of damage there from bleed. So he is susceptible to that, it looks like. Let's go again. This is fun. We got a boss. Let's try some guard counters here at the start. If we actually are guarding. Or if we actually do block something. Uh, we got our guard broken, but it's okay. I probably don't want to block that one. That seems like a pretty heavy hit. I'm going to try to avoid that one if I can. Man, the short sword. Probably need to drink. This guy is, for the most part, he's not the fastest attacker. I need to be careful about that tail. And of course, the short sword. And the shuriken follow up. It, it's more of a throwing knife, I guess. But I like the bleed. I like the bleed that we're getting. That's This is good. But then he 
Brings out the hammer phase too. Oh. I'm getting greedy. I'm getting so greedy. Oh man, I did not roll through all that. Yo, holy shit. Okay, punishing the spam roll. <laughs> he brings out so many more combos in the second phase. This is really cool. Dude, I love the um the fluidity of the of the fighting. Getting back in the Dark Souls rhythm here and the way that it's done so far. It's just the first boss, but it's already it already has such a cool feel to it. Margit the Fell Omen. So phase one is really not too bad. I still am bugged by not knowing what that, what that, um, that, uh, that grave symbol is. Greedy. Trying to go for those 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 bleed. That bleed build up. Don't want to get greedy though. Got a stamina. Gotta manage stamina. That it was meant to drink. Oh man, it already does feel so much after getting our after getting our ass handed to us by the uh, the tree sentinel, and now like the tree sentinel feels more like one of those absurd challenges that you're not really supposed to try to take on at the beginning. This feels more like maybe the genuine first boss in the game. I don't know. Who knows? It's an open world game. You could do sh sh shit in so much different order, but this is like the main path, the main path of progression. So first boss in my mind, and it already has given me a headache in its, uh, it just has so many, so such a variety of attacks. And um, I don't know, maybe we should switch to two-handed. Try to go a little bit more two-handed, just stick to all the rolls and not even worry about blocking. We could try that, just get more attack power. And just focus on the rolls. They do have to be good rolls, which they are not at the moment. It also lets us do the skill if we want, right? And that does a significant amount of damage. That is not a bad move at all. Except I was much lower on health than I realized. Or I guess not blocking that attack. Not blocking that attack is uh, is kind of foolhardy. Dude, look at some of the, the art that we're seeing on these loading screens. I cannot wait to see these um, later in the game. Okay, I don't know if two-handed is going to be the way to go, but it, it we did so much damage with our, with our skills. We are going to run out of... Um, hmm... Maybe it's better to... Hmm. I was thinking about saving... Saving the... Um, our focus points for the second phase. Hmm. How do we want to do this? Just get good. That's what we do. We just get good. I'm probably going to be relying more on my shield. As I get back into the swing of things. And relying on the bleed buildup.
That is very much like, it feels so much like Pontiff because it was so, that, that quick attack from the, from the short sword from Pontiff was so screwing me over. Love that bleed though. That builds up pretty quickly. Yo, what? So that spin move or spin combination, I uh, should probably still be rolling toward the boss there. It feels like that's a an ability that is specifically meant to punish the panic roll away, which is clearly what I was doing there. We go again. This phase two. We got to figure this out. Margit, you bastard. Guard counters, I don't know that they're really getting me anywhere. Don't know if they're getting me anywhere. No! Yeah, it's a follow-up. I'm not gonna drink yet. Now we'll drink. Punished. Punished! He was just waiting. Waiting for me to do the drink. Well, not ideal to be down to one flask already. I am rolling so early sometimes. Why am I attacking? What am I doing? Some of this is like relearning buttons. Okay, the flask animation does last a fair bit. Put these foolish ambitions to rest. We cannot, we cannot get in the mode of dodge an attack and then attack immediately. There are so many instances where he has a follow-up. There are going to be follow-up attacks that you have to be ready for. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I am having fun, but I also... This is kind of what I had um, a feeling was going to be the case. That um, Elden Ring is going to be hard that it is actually going to be hard for once. All the other games before this, people have said, oh yeah, Dark Souls is hard. Sekiro is hard. Bloodborne is hard. Those games were challenging in their own ways, but I never found them to be overly hard, at least the way that people let on. This game so far is living up to that billing. We got to figure it out. Do I want to keep going with this kind of I mean, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going with this. I think we've got an okay setup. We just need to do the moves. We just need to do the moves properly. Roll at the right times, and actually block things. Follow up attacks. Follow up attacks. I could probably go for a hit there when he charges that up. That little underhanded swing is getting me. Shit. Should have swung there. Well, 
Thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood must truly run from thy veins. Tarnished. Put these Shit. foolish that, it's the It's the panic rest. roll away. Yeah, the panic roll away is gonna get you. And the timing between the, each of the spins is enough to where if you if you spam the roll button, he's gonna get you with one of them. That's the one we gotta learn. We gotta learn the um, the spin to win move there. The hammer is fairly dodgeable. The hammer is uh, is not as much of a problem, but we've got to figure out what to do with that spin move. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It would be nice to be able to use a better shield. And if I if I were to go out and do just a little bit of farming, we could probably do that. Maybe I will do that really quickly because I have some stuff in my inventory. I can pop. I can get 600 souls this way. And if I um, if I go and I farm some enemies here, how much do each of these guys give? Do they even come in here or do they leash? I think they leash. Oh, I, I, I broke his stance. I broke his stance. So that's another thing, right? Enemies have like this. You can just break their stance using like a charged attack or a jump attack. These are things that can be accomplished. that not connect? Yeah, so you, if you get the fully charged attack there on some of them, you can break their stance. It doesn't matter with these guys because they still die so quickly, and I'm not really going for the repost. Oh, look at the tumbleweed. That's fun. This little tumbleweed just rolling along. All right, let's get this guy. Oh, he's got a big sword. Is he tougher? Nope. Not that much tougher. Still dies from a backstab. Okay, we should be able to level up now. Maybe. Let's find out. See if that gets us where we want to go. And we can maybe get a shield upgrade here. Which would be nice. So let's pop all of our... What is that symbol? So the graveyard symbol is out here. But then when I get next to the sight of grace, it goes away. Why is that? What is the deal there? Is it because I have a pickup? Is that what it is? It's because I haven't picked up my my souls yet. That must be what it is. We can test that, right? If we pick up our souls and we can see if that goes away. Uh, what was I going to do? We need to pop these. Use all. And does that get us to the next level? Level up, level up. Forgive me. I've been testing you to see whether or not Grace truly does guide you and whether you are fit to face the challenge that entails. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start. Whereas I merely pretended. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the round table hold, gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. Oh, we can go there now? I get it now. I think the round table hold sounds like our Firelink Shrine. So let's do that. Let's go check out Round Table Hole, shall we? We can come right back here. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. I was going to be very surprised if we didn't have a hub area like every other game. And that sounds like where we're going. We just had to progress far enough, unlock enough. There we go. Round Table Hold. It's a place where the tarnished gather, guided by grace. Combat is prohibited on the premises due to a pact of non-aggression. 
This rule is in effect when the roundtable icon is displayed. The roundtable hold is located outside of this world, and fast travel by grace is the only means of reaching it. Use the map to travel there. There you go. It's a place where the tarnished gather, which makes it sound like if you were playing online that you might see other players here, potentially. I wonder if that's how that works. Whoa, look at this table. We can rest here. So this is like, oh, and the light, of course. This is our massive home bonfire, huh? Look at each of these weapons in here. And oh, they're kind of like sprouting roots, aren't they? Weapons made from the air tree or the great tree. This is cool. Oh, man. Let's see what happens when we rest here. Can we level up? It looks like it acts like any other. I'm going to keep calling them bonfires. The, the, the sights of grace. Bonfire is just so much easier to say. Just feels so much more natural. But we can do all the things that we could do otherwise. Cool, cool, cool. It looks like there are some, some peoples to talk to here. So maybe we will take a brief break from fighting the boss. And... Um, in fact, I will take just a very quick breather to uh, use the restroom and we'll get back here and we'll start chatting with some homies here at the round table hold. Quick BRB. OK, let's go ahead and start <laughs> making the rounds <laughs> at the round table hold. Huh? Who we got here? Oh, this is a rare occasion. I can't remember the last time a new tarnished made their way to the round table. Boys. Very well. As your senior, I bid you welcome. It is safe here. You may let down your guard. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's a character from Game of Thrones who I don't remember his name. I could also be wrong, though, and it's just a really cool accent. That sounds like it should be from Game of Thrones. Allow me a word of advice as your senior. You are a mere visitor to the round table. Nothing more. A house guest. Yet to... Earn their keep. Remember your place, newcomer. Dude, look at this staff that this guy has. He's trying to keep us in our place. But my goodness, let's take a look at you here. This is... What in the world do you have? There's like an orb there that's partly... It's got like an Eye of Sauron sort of feel to it. What in the hell? Dude... And this guy's, this guy's helmet is awesome. This, the accent is cool as shit. Let's keep talking to you. There's nothing left to say. Be at your leisure. Okay. All right. There's nothing left. All right. He'll, he'll, he'll warm up to us in time, I'm sure. Let's keep going around here and see. Oh, I, mm, I hope that wasn't your chair. Pay no attention to me breaking the chairs over here. Oh my god. Okay, so this is like the um, one of the cleric type characters that we saw in, at, in the character selection screen, right? Instead of the, um, this is a wheel or something you've got around your neck, but it, these uh, prisoners or what were they? What were they called exactly? You've got like a, a chain, or a, a, a shackle on your foot. What's going on with you? Oh, I see you've just arrived. Welcome to the Round Table Hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. Corin. I teach incantations, the strength granted us by the two fingers, and mm. explore the secrets of the Golden Order, so that one day, if a tarnished of the Round Table Hold should become Elden Lord, I might counsel them, ensuring order regains its proper form, writing rule over men. By the way, do you still see it? The guidance of grace. I believe that's a yes. I think he's talking about the the rays of grace that are pointing the way. I think we're still seeing those. He mentioned incantations and the and two fingers. Are incantations like a replacement for miracles? Because you have a very cleric, holy kind of vibe. You're the Golden Order. Sounds like where we're going with this, but I do see the um, the Golden Guidance. What did you call it again? Wonderful news. Most tarnished oh. are blind to it these days. You are something of a rare breed. Well, 
What do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the two fingers? Study incantations. Let's check that out. That's what it looks like. It looks like incantations are miracles. Attributes required for urgent heal, faith eight. Okay. Heal, faith 12. So we do have miracles, except they're called incantations. Cure poison, magic fortification, flame fortification. Rejection produces a shockwave that pushes away foes. Force? Emit force? I don't remember what the introductory miracle in Dark Souls was called like this, but that sounds exactly like what we're dealing with. Okay, but this is what looks like a pyromancy. Whoa, catch flame. Momentarily sparks flame from hand. Incantation originated, we, we should read through some of these. So let's, let's start with the pyromancies here, but apparently it looks like pyromancies and miracles have been gathered under one banner, incantations. And I'm noticing that the attribute requirement is just faith. You do not have to split intelligence and faith in order to do pyromancy, so it seems. Very cool. I kind of want to do a faith build now. I I was already kind of thinking about re rehashing or um, running back the faith build from DS3, and if they're going to have pyromancies involved with this, oh, this is the beauty of a blind playthrough. Not knowing these sorts of little details. I love coming across this stuff when you, you're, it's just a small thing. It's just a small thing. But now understanding that pyromancies and miracles exist under the same uh, mechanic, I'm getting excited. Let's read. Or did we read this already? No, no, no. Momentarily sparks flame from the caster's hand. This incantation can be cast without delay after performing another action. So it's like you can do a, it's, it feels like combustion that you do after a sword swing or something. The flame of ruin is anathema to the air tree, but prophets sometimes glimpse it within the faith all the same. Sadly, when this occurs, their sole reward is banishment. Flame sling. Looks like a fireball. Throws a ball of raging fire. Charging. Charging enhances potency and causes the ball of fire to explode. Yo, you can charge magic? Oh, <laughs> I think we might be doing a faith build, ladies and gentlemen. The flame of ruin is anathema to the air tree, yada, yada, yada. Now, what do the miracles say? So that's like, this is like the darker side of the incantations. But then you have this more typical holy alignment that you would have with miracles. So urgent heal incantation of the two fingers faithful, as opposed to a incantation originating from a sinister prophecy. Heals a small amount of HP. This incantation can be cast while in motion. Okay, this one does not. So this is more, this is kind of like a life gem almost. You could keep moving if when you, when you uh, cast life gems. Or use life gems. The Two Fingers has high hopes for the Tarnished that even if they should be wounded, even should they fall, they will continue to fight for their duty. Hold to continue praying and delay activation. Oh, to continue praying. Huh? The two fingers has high hopes. Okay, that part is the same, it looks like, for all miracles or some miracles. There's some different stuff on some of them. Cure poison can be cast while in motion. So some of these are mobile, mobile casting. I mean, that's a great way to try to make faith builds or just uh, magic builds in general being more uh, viable. I don't know if it's enough to make them viable for PvP. I will not be testing that out myself. Magic damage negation. Okay. Also cast in motion. Follow the path that has been set for you and you will make enemies of all others. The monks, the sorcerers, the ancient dragon knights, and the scions of gold. Heed me. The lands between offers no Welcome to the Tarnished. And we also have Flame Fortification. 
and then rejection hark tarnished if you truly walk in faith you must be prepared to reject all else dude we're gonna level up our strength to get to that next shield because i do want a hundred percent damage reduction shield but i am super excited about potentially doing a faith build but we also what is switch view oh the switch the the view over here yeah yeah that's fine I, I was just uh, thinking about, are there any other, this is all items, right? Okay, so we've seen everything that you have to offer. Cool. Corin. Cornix was the pyromancer in DS3 who also was blindfolded. Related to Cornix, my dude? So then are we going to get like, I wonder, is there a sorcerer NPC around here somewhere? There's also another room to check out okay we ah, this is fun you must be new here look at this guy's I'm, outfit well just call me dialos the honor of one's house holds little import in these lands by the way dialos you met a young woman named lanya on your travels she's my servant but fickle as the wind take your eyes off her for but a moment and she's good as gone if you find her please be sure to tell me i want to say that's a no I don't think we've come across Lanya yet. We'll keep an eye out. Be sure to tell me if you meet a young woman. She's a servant to me. She's been my companion since childhood. I've lost count of the number of times I've had to find her like this. Honestly, she's such a little tomboy. Okay. Diallo. I love the, um... The, the, the shoulder... The shoulder pads, the shoulder uh, armaments that you've got going on here. And he also has the uh, the perfect sexy stubble going on this guy this guy is probably a uh, a major player at the stronghold arm the, the the stronghold arm the 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 round table hold what am i talking about here i'm thinking about the stormvale castle okay let's keep moving on here let's keep moving forward i cannot use right it's it's disabled the horse that's why i can't i thought it had de-equipped my my horse ring Holy shit, we have a blacksmith. And this guy, whoa. Oh, you look like you're related to what's-his-face, the boss that we've been dying to. You look very similar to that guy. Except you've cut off all your horns. Are you related to Andre? <laughs> Hello? You're a new face. No matter. It's all the same. Lay out your arms. Let's get smithing. Cut right to the chase. Flame, dear flame. Okay. He looks like he can do Ashes of War. Ash of War duplication. What is this? Let me see if I can decipher this menu. So these are the two that we've picked up so far. I did not read Wild Strikes yet. Okay, so it's I see it says Storm Stomp and Quality. Quality was the affinity. And if we look at this one, this one has a heavy affinity, which sounds like it enhances your... if you're more of a dedicated strength build. Colossal weapons expect accepted? In other words, you can't use this on colossal weapons. Usable on axes and hammers, as well as curved swords and great swords. The Ash of War grants an armament the heavy affinity and the following skill. Wild Strikes swing armament with Wild Abandon. Hold to continue swinging. Can be followed up with a normal or strong attack. Axes and hammers, as well as curved swords and great swords. Huh. But we need. What does this do? Is there? There's a an uh, explanation here. That's just for the stuff on the side. That's not what we want. I see where it says lost ashes of war up on the left, and then there's like a required thing that we don't have consumable material. I don't know. Apparently, we can duplicate this if we get a certain material. If we really wanted to have a second of a certain Ash of War, we can just sell stuff to the blacksmith, which is cool. Tell me about the chains on your legs, which I don't uh, I don't see at the moment, but I guess there are... Oh, I see it now. There's a shackle down there. Dang, you've got like some dragon feet. Is that what these guys are? Related to dragons somehow? I see you've noticed the chains. Nothing special. I'm a prisoner, and these are my chains. I'm trapped by the hold. 
I'm dying, smithing for you fools. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Undying. There's always got to be undying, but I think we're undying as well. We're just called tarnished this time. Let's just check this menu just to be sure. We need four to get to our next upgrade. Okay. It looks like it's the same menu as what we have normally at the uh, the bonfire, but it can go higher, I think, is the uh, the main difference, right? We can go beyond plus three, which we're not at yet. Let's ask him more about uh, being a prisoner. No, there's only too much into it. Well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Given time, technique never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. The sheer terror of her. Hmm. Who might you be talking about? Merica? Queen Merica? Who's gone missing? And all her, um, her offspring, the demigods? They have the shards of the uh, the Elden Ring. Okay, moving right along. I'm also thinking about this icon. Similar to the graveyard icon, or gravestone icon, there's another icon now that's above our parry. I don't know if, oh, is that like preventing combat? So we can't, if I R1 or R2, or like we can't swing our weapons at all. Similar to Sekiro, okay, all right. There are, there are spots that are, they did tell us when we got here, no weapon combat allowed. You, why do you seem familiar? No, I guess I'm just thinking of, I, I'm thinking of um, Melina because you have a hood like she does. Who might you be? Greetings, great champion called by grace. I am fear. Circumstances <gasps> oh. have compelled my stay at the round table hold. Great champion, would you allow me to hold you? But briefly, perhaps you might share with me some of your lively vigor and your stout heartedness doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion and you i am sure will bear a balderkin's blessing do you think it vulgar perhaps where i come from it is a sacred act look we just we just met i usually don't i usually don't do this on the first date but um um fia Companion of the Dead? Is that what she was called in the opening cutscene? It felt like we were doing, like, the Dark Souls thing where we were kind of, like, laying out the bosses that we're going to be facing, but is she not a boss? I don't know about letting her hold us, though. Like, it sounded like maybe she was going to be stealing some of our life force. Oh, God, this could be a terrible mistake. Uh, okay, when in doubt, you say yes in Dark Souls, but not sure. Oh, my thanks. Great champion. I hope I don't regret this. What are we doing? Uh, do we need to uh, fade to black here? Okay. You are very warm. Baldekin's blessing. What you felt light up inside you was a Baldekin's blessing. Though it is but a fleeting thing, I am afraid. Come back to me. Should you require another, I will take you in my arms as often as you need. Sometimes you just need a hug. And a Baldekin's blessing, apparently. I am noticing... It was quite dramatic. I was, I'm noticing there's an icon that has popped up in the top left which looks like it maybe has diminished our vigor, which is kind of what she said. I don't want to go to the menu. I keep doing that on accident. What I want to do is I want to go to my inventory and see what is this about. Uses FP to temporarily boost poise. Favor bestowed by a deathbed companion. Protection of a hidden temple in the guise of a bedchamber. Use FP to temporarily boost poise. The favor allows one to forget any aches and pains, in death, there is only peace, for in death, there can be no sensation. Huh. I feel like there's more to the story here, because it does seem... I don't remember what our HP was before, but I feel like... I feel like we might have lost a bit of HP. Maybe not that much. 
But I could have sworn we leveled up to like 470 or something. Can we use this? Is this a thing we can just use? And that consumed FP to give us poise. Huh. Can we throw it away if we want? Oh. It just actually used it. It was literally a consumable that we, we could use one time. Well, I just kind of wasted that. But we did, in fact, lose some F some HP. Hold on. How do I get to my... Um... We're now back at 476. So it does... You do lose just a slight amount of HP in exchange for that. Huh. An interesting trade-off. And it lasted very, very short amount of time. But it is fascinating that one of the characters mentioned in the opening cutscene, we have met. Nice to meet you, Fia. What else do you have for us, if anything? Like me to hope. It's, we, go, we go straight back to the, uh, the, the, the Baldekin's Blessing. And we will refuse day this day. time. We are going to keep that in the memory banks. If we do need some poise in a pinch, we can come back and... Uh, what is this? Use mirror? Apply cosmetics? What? Oh, shit. We can actually, like, change our appearance. Oh, well, that's cool. You can just go change your character's appearance anytime. Well, then I wouldn't have spent as much time as I did on, on the character creation. Not that I was there forever, but, uh, but hey, look at that. Does it cost anything? Looks like it doesn't even cost anything. So we could, we could come back and play with this all we want. Good to know. Cool. We could even just do the old, do the old gender swap. No big deal. Cool. Wait. We... <laughs> it only swapped the, the, the body type. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, okay, cool. We're going to just leave that the way it was. <laughs> I'm already in love with this game. Let's move right along to the next part of the <laughs> round table. There are a couple different ways to go here. Let's go back. There was another room in the connected to the round table that I wanted to check out. This is so cool looking. Oh, this is great. What does the fire actually does something? Enter Coliseum combat. Sounds like a PVP thing. I'm guessing that's a PVP thing, so I'm not going to check that out right now. Let's go this way. Where does this lead? The door is blocked shut. Locked shut. When is that going to open? What about this way? What is over here? This is so cool. Anybody in this room? It can be a little dark sometimes. Oh! The wow. Wow. What is this outfit? Hello? Oh my god. Whoa, dude. Okay, yeah, I just pretty much about walked right by you. So, um, yeah, you are blending right in. We'll talk at some point. N or not. What do you want? <laughs> not that menu, goddammit. Hold on. Hold on. Gotta remember what buttons to press here. One second. Oh, I'm not leaning the right way. You... you... <laughs> I see what you got to do here. Hold on. You have to, you have to go, you have to stand this way, apparently. Yeah. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong dang thing. Because you turn to the side. There we go. Now, this is very much, this is the, like, uh, who was the guy in uh, the Dark Souls 1 DLC? Chester? Just leaning against the wall, hanging out. What do you want? Don't bother me. Okay. Uh, is that it? Apparently, that's it. Okay, cool. So I don't know what your deal is. You just hang out and uh, and look uh, emo as hell. Let's. Thanks for the gesture. Can we climb the ladder? No. This is fun. We can roll, so we can break stuff. Oh, hello there. Oh my God! Wait, are these the two fingers? Are these the two fingers? Oh, we're getting a little bit of a weird thing there because I'm too close apparently. 
Wind Maiden Husks. They do look actually rather dead, don't they? What do they sell? Some stuff. Rune Arc. Grants the blessing of an equipped great rune upon use. The sh a Shard of the Shattered Elden Ring. Grants the blessing of an equipped great rune. Even if no great rune is equipped, it will slightly increase maximum HP upon use. The lower arc of the Elden Ring is held to be the basin in which its blessings pool. Perhaps this shard originates from that very arc. What the hell? I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Cypher Ring. Online play. Online play. Okay. One of the lost mythic codes said to have been bestowed by the two fingers. Hmm. Memory Stone? Increases memory slots. Are memory slots supposed to be spell slots? Prized by the sorcerers who produced them. Said to be a fragment of the black moon that once hung above the eternal city. Oh, and then we have stone sword keys. Three of them. Good to know. So now I don't feel so bad about going back to the beginning of the game and using the stone sword key that we found. That would be a fun thing to try. Lots of familiar Dark Souls weapons here. With probably some interesting differences in the skills. Dagger has quick step. That was the way it was in DS3. Square off. This skill starts with the sword held level. Follow up with a normal attack to slash upwards through enemy's guard or a strong attack to perform a running thrust. That sounds similar to what the longsword had in DS3. They kind of changed the name. Rapier, impaling thrust, skill that lets piercing armaments overcome enemy shields, build power, then lunge forward with a strong thrust that pierces an enemy's guard. Cool, cool, cool. Spinning slash for the scimitar. Battle axe with the wild strikes. Just like DS3, it's going to be very cool figuring out all the different skills and um, honing in on the one that you like. It's, it's very curious to me that some weapons just have kick as a skill. <laughs> Could be very key to have on hand, though. Maybe having a kick a kick weapon at all times is, is the thing to do. Mighty Shot. Finger Seal. A sacred seal bestowed by a finger maiden which serves as a catalyst for casting sacred incantations. So this is what you need for miracles or pyromancies, but now they're incantations. Must be memorized first at a site of grace, and a sacred seal must be equipped to cast them. Right. Okay. Memorized. There it is. Like I thought, memory slots are attunement slots. Cool. Heater shield. Also 100, um, 100 physical damage reduction. And it looks like this one only requires 10 strength. Since we have that other shield and we're just one point away, we'll still probably go to 16 strength. Night helm. Oh, this is the, uh, I think the armor set for the, uh, what was the class? The Vagabond? Essentially, the knight. It's got the knight armor. And all, I think, the um, the different tutorial messages look like they have this armor set as the uh, the player characters. Cool. Furled Fingers Trick Mirror. Reflects an image of a golden figure. Makes the bearer take on the appearance of a host of fingers. Oh, it's like a PvP uh, special, like, illusion thing. Okay. Created by the Tarnish to deceive invaders. Interesting. And then there's another one for the appearance of a summoned cooperator. Okay, okay. Some PvP shenanigans here that we will not be worrying about. Okay, interesting vendor. Offer a bell bearing? I don't think I have one of those. Don't know what that is yet. So they deal with bell bearings. Okay, that's the end of the road. Wow, we have found our hub area and there is so much to digest here. But I am, I, I'm really, like the most exciting discovery has been incantations and I, I think we might be pushing in that direction now this is the way that I had seen can we can we jump down there I wonder do I want to jump down there will it let me jump down here ah <gasps> it will oh did I jump into a place where you battle what is the icon that I just got in the top left I don't know what that is invaded by oh wait what mad tongue Alberic. We're offline, so this is Reverential Bow. This is an NPC, right? This has to be an NPC, doesn't it? Ooh, okay. 
Frostbite and Bleed. Well, we can backstab you, but you do have a lot of HP. And you have Sorceries. What the hell? Oh, and you healed. That does a lot of damage. What did you just cast? I am two-handing my fucking shield because... I knew I was going to panic hit the joystick. Well, we're getting our butt whooped here. Okay. I did not really realize what I was getting into. Am I going to lose my souls over this? Am I going to lose my souls over this? I should have leveled up. Holy shit. God damn it. I was told there would be no combat in the round table hold. Jebated. Does it at least put my... No, my souls are down there. Fuck me. Can I go in and warp out? Grab these and warp the hell out of here because I do not want to deal with this right now. That is not what I wanted to get into. I cannot warp, can I? God damn it. Okay, I guess we're doing this. Let's try to get good. Dude, he's doing like some Maria fucking... Feels like what Maria does when she, um... When she spawns whatever phase that is. Is he like, he's creating a mist, isn't he? We got bleed though, that'll work. I should not let him heal. That's a mistake. It's also a mistake to charge. Oh, I'm gonna have to beat this guy to get my souls back because I can't warp out of here. Fuck me. Getting the bleed on him is a good, uh, a good thing. It's probably best for us not to be guarding. So we can probably just switch to two-handed once we get in the arena, I guess. And we can also just start, we're gonna, we're, we're not gonna be bowing or anything. We're not gonna be allowing, if he wants to bow at the beginning, this is not Nightmare King Grim. I'm not going to um, give him the, we're gonna take, see if we can take full advantage here. Ah, that didn't really get us much of anywhere. Man, that's so much damage. Fuck, dude. And the frostbite. I don't know actually yet what frostbite does. If it does the same thing that it that it did in Dark Souls Three, I'm gonna assume that for now. But um, ah, this is an unfortunate situation that we have found ourselves in. We're going to see if we can make it through. I was hoping I could get a backstab there. I was hoping I could get a backstab, but um, no such luck, or at least I didn't. Uh, I might not have waited for the right moment. It is so tough to roll through that. Cuz he has a it's a it's a spin that you're you're going to come out of your roll before it's done. And then the flask really does take a long time, doesn't it? I'm not rolling in time. Oh my god. Ay yeah 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 yeah. Maybe guard counters? Should we be trying to do guard counters against this guy? 
it, it would feel like breaking somebody's stance is the way to go in a PvP encounter for sure. So maybe that's what we need to focus on. Trying to do guard counters or other sorts of... I can't do it until I'm down here, apparently. Other sorts of um, techniques to break stance. Jump attacks. We should draw, let's let's see if we can just do a charge attack. That might be the best way to go here. That did not work. It takes so dang long to drink. rolled right into it. It feels like we're too far away. When Whenever we go for guard counters, it feels like the enemies are just too far away from us. He's beating us to the punch every time. I need to be maybe just a little more aggressive. This is unfortunate because I want my 1k souls. Am I just going to have to give up these souls and say that they are lost because I have like a dingus just jumped into something that I didn't know was a fucking... I mean, gosh. It kind of does look like a boss room. I will admit when I first saw that, I was like, if I am able to jump over this, this feels like it would be a boss room. I just YOLO'd it and now I'm paying the price. Is there really no way... Oh, maybe there is a way out of here. Hold on. There's something to the side. Is there is there potentially a way out? There might be a way out. Or not? Cypher Pata? This is just another part of the area which we're going to be trapped in here in a moment by the... Um... Yeah, here he comes. So it's just another little part of the zone. God damn it. How many spells do you have? God damn. Hold on a second here. This guy sucks. And there's no way out of it. I hate it. Just seeing if there's anything else that I've missed around here. Now that item that we picked up, I don't know if that's going to be of any help to us. Just not being aggressive enough. It's gotta be it, right? The jump attack feels like an okay way to kind of start things. He's doing the same thing. out of flasks when we get the blood loss when we get the blood loss on him it's good shit but we need to be able to keep the the, the attacks going he's backing out of our range we'll get this maybe I want those damn runes though 
I want my damn runes. Fucking hell, dude. It does feel like two-handed is the way to go. And maybe use more of our skills. Keep on rolling. Just keep rolling. Give me those runes, please. The frostbite is really is really getting us. Let him get the drink off. Got the bleed, though. I thought he was going to take a drink. I'll take a drink. Oh, he's out. He only has one flask. I'm getting some lag. Oh, I thought the lag was going to do me in. We got there. Mad Tongue Albrich has died. And we got the Taunter's Tongue. Oh, holy shit. I did not know what I was getting myself into. But hey, we got 1,600 runes out of it. Okay. Fine. Let's get the hell out of here if it'll let me. <laughs> we are getting a little bit of a dip in frames here and there. Which I will see if I can adjust. I think it's just a matter of me. Um... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not getting any frame drops on OBS. So this is clearly like a game hiccup that's happening. So I don't know if it's because I am recording. I don't know exactly what's causing it. Please get us out of here. Please take me to the entrance and I never want to come back. Maybe not never, but I definitely don't want to come back now. Holy shit. That was not the uh, the, the detour that I was wanting to take, but we survived and we not only um, we more than doubled our runes in the process. So we uh, at least got something for our troubles so there you go all right is there anything else there is definitely more here that we have not checked out yet we checked that out D did not listen to my gut instinct there i and and not yoloing the uh, the pvp encounter this looks like it's probably a door we cannot go through what is down the stairs however we will check out that tongue in just a moment in fact let's just do that now before i forget Let's check this out. A Taunter's Tongue. It is reusable. Lures in invaders. Okay, it's a PvP thing. Online play only. Lures in invaders. Shortens the interval between windows of opportunity for invasion. Additionally, en enables the arrival of a second invader to join when a cooperator is present. The more the merrier when it comes to PvP, right? Okay. What do we got down here? Some apples. This is the um, the pantry down here. Storing all the food. What is this? I should go level up before I go walking through a fog wall. Except it's not letting me go through the fog wall. Huh. So this is blocked, it seems. There looks like there is a treasure chest in there. I see a treasure chest that is glowing. Hmm. Oh, it's one of these. Oh, so we now do have two places to use a stone sword key. Interesting. It looks like it just basically would get us access to that chest. Is there anything else? Oh, there's another imp statue there. It goes deeper. There is another fog gate, it looks like, on the left here that we could unlock. Hmm, now we've got decisions. So we will think about that, but I do want to see what's in that chest. Okay, I think we have reached the end. This is not a door we can interact with, so I think we have now fully explored the hold. We've got to decide where we want to use our, our key. Feels like a, a fragrant branch of your type of uh, mechanic. Got to figure out where we want to use that. We don't need a hug right now. Let's just go level up, shall we? Let's spend our points... <laughs> Our runes, our souls, let's spend all that here at the round table. 
the ta or I should say the Table of Lost Grace. I'm excited about trying out incantations, but that will be for a little bit later. We're going to level up strength. And we can do one more if we we need a few more souls to get to the next, which will probably be. Let's see what we get. If we were to do vigor, we get 23 HP. Endurance gets us. That's the thing. We got to keep remembering endurance gives us both equip load and stamina now, which is pretty clutch. So I might want to do endurance before. So let's do strength to get us to that shield like we wanted to. And um, I mean, we could also we don't have to spend leveling up necessarily. We could buy oh, you appear to be doing well. An incantation. Good. Well then. I might want to learn an incantation. Urgent heal. Give ourselves a little bit more healing and we can use this when we're on the move. I am super curious to try this out. But we are also like extremely close to getting a level. So I think we'll do that. Let's go sell some stuff at the blacksmith. And then we will level up. Because we are just right on the cusp of that next level. And then we'll think about getting some well, incantations later. I took you for dead. No matter, it's all the same. Lay out your arms then. Not quite as cool as Andre, but uh, Smithing Master Hugh. I had not seen your name before. Had not taken note of that. Andre will always be the coolest. There's just no way around it. But we can sell some stuff to you, which is nice. We could not do that with Andre, as cool as he was. What do we want to sell? We just want to get to... I forgot what the number was. But we can probably sell some crafting materials. Feels like the crafting materials are the uh, the stuff that you want to be... Because uh, you can just go out and farm for those anytime you want. And the more common ones, for sure, like Roa Fruit. Let's do like seven of these. I went the wrong direction, but that's fine. And we'll do one more. Aired leaf flower. I think that gets us to our next. I think that gets us to a level. Let's find out. I should have made note of the number before I did that, but it's fine. I went overboard. It's whatever. Endurance is what we will get here. And yeah. Let's lock that in. We'll get to level 15. And now I think we are ready to go give another shot. We are ready, first of all, to equip a new shield. Let's get that going. We actually have two of these now. The only problem is that does put us at a heavy load. So we have to do a little bit of juggling here in terms of our load. Because otherwise, I'm guessing we're going to be getting some fat roll action. We don't really want that kind of action. That's not what we're looking for. So let's figure out what we are taking off. Probably the war pick. Where are the weights on these? Two and a half. Actually, the war pick is pretty light. Surprisingly, the bow is much heavier than the. Uh... We could take off some of our armaments. We could just take off the gloves. But we don't really need a torch right now. We don't really need a torch, do we? So let's take that off. It still has, heavy, still has heavy load. We'll take off the war pick. And we'll keep our Uchi Katana for the boss fight. And now we have... Well, I can't raise my shield now because we are at the... We are at the... The round table. The pacifist area. We always got to use the, the map for traveling, don't we? So now we go Sites of Grace and now we have two different... Okay, so here's the round table hold. And we have Limgrave. And we want to go to Stormhill, the Castle Word, Castle Word Tunnel. That's it. Let's go back to the boss. Time to get our butts kicked once again. We'll see how much of an improvement this shield is. He does, I think, have some holy attacks, or I don't know exactly how they're counted. So we're still not going to... Probably not going to be able to block everything. He 
Yeah. His, his little short sword still goes through our shield because it's not physical damage. The guard counter just doesn't seem like it's good against certain enemies, at least. I don't know if it's most enemies, but there are definitely certain enemies who are very uh, unaffected by the attempt to guard counter them. At least from what I can tell so far. I could be wrong. I did not see whether this was a parry, whether this was a parry shield or not, and whether we want to try to parry this guy. What am I doing? Bro, I felt like I couldn't move there. I'm out of flasks. Of course, I am. Too soon. Okay. So... We have an issue. We have a little bit of an issue. Because I... am continuously in my... Uh, the way that I play with this uh, the, the PS4 controller... And I think it would probably happen with any controller. But this is the only controller that I have played with recently. When I'm in the heat of battle, I press L3. I don't know how to turn off that instinct. It just happens. I panic press L3 because I'm gripping the controller so tight. And I thought I had, uh, you know, headed off at the pass. The, um, the whole, like, crouching during battle that we had in Sekiro. But, unfortunately, Elden Ring is different because even when you switch that up, you're still left with this dual wielding. Not dual wielding, but uh, two handing. Right? R3, not R3, but L3 is part of two handing. That, that et cetera there is very important. I think we're going to switch this back. We're going to switch this back and see how bad it is getting into battle with crouching. Panic crouching during battle. How bad is that? Because you can still swing, right? In fact, you swing right out of a crouch, which was not the case in Sekiro. That was the big problem with Sekiro is that if you get if you went into a crouch and you were trying to swing, it wouldn't take you out of the crouch. You do that here. So that's good. Okay, now, what does this shield do? It is... Strike? No, it's no skill. It has no skill. Oh, if the armament on the other hand has a skill, that skill will be used instead. So this is like it is in DS3. It just says no skill. But this is the equivalent of having weapon skill or whatever as part of your shield. So we can. This is kind of what I was hoping for, because I don't know that I want to be parrying this guy. Maybe we can experiment with that, but I like the idea of being able to go into sheath stance sometimes against this guy. That could be very useful. We might do that in the in the second phase. I don't know. The, the second phase is so fucking hairy right now. <laughs> I just got to get my brain up to speed with this phase. Jesus Christ. I also still haven't figured out what that... that Looks like a gravestone thing. Maybe it's not a gravestone. I don't know exactly what it is. Haven't figured that out yet. Get our stamina back. Thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood must 
truly run in my veins. Tarnished. There really is a Pontiff vibe to this guy. At least so far in my ability to react to his attacks, which is non-existent right now. Fuck. Bro, I'm just so slow on everything. I'm, I'm literally like, my reaction speeds are snail's pace. And then I ran out of stamina. Because I'm getting impatient. Because I'm starting to get a little frustrated at uh, not, I'm hitting this wall at phase two and just not, uh, am, I, am I not being aggressive enough? That's what I haven't figured out yet. It feels very difficult to get the openings against this guy. Very, very difficult. I am not figuring it out right now. It could be that I need to go out into the world and explore some more and get some more flask shards or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. We should be able to beat this guy. I hate that. Fuck, why was I... I thought I was blocking. I could have sworn I was blocking. I should have just rolled, though. Fuck me. All my timings are off right now. What the fuck? I'm not rolling, like, through attacks. And then I'm thinking that I'm, like, walking around the attack, and I'm clearly not. I need an attack after that. Man, so many follow-ups. I need a hit attack there. Fuck me, man. It's like he goes into berserk mode. I just have not figured out those combos. <laughs> and it's like the first boss in the game is giving you a set of combos that would be reserved for the later stages of a Dark Souls game, right? At least that's how it feels right now. Whatever, whatever mode that I'm in, I don't know if this is me adjusting back from Sekiro, right? It could be that I'm just not back in the flow of Dark Souls. Or this guy is just a hard boss. I don't know what it is. I do like that. I could have told, I could have noticed what the skill on the shield was by just reading where it says unsheathe and realize, oh, it's giving me my katana skill. 
I don't know if I can utilize that at all against this guy. But I think that's... We just got to keep going and learning the openings. I had a better flow in the first phase there because I was just flowing. Hate that. See, I could get the I, I could be getting free hits in there. So that is one of these things that I probably need to focus on. It's just focusing on hitting those openings. I'm rolling the wrong way. Jump attacks, maybe, is something I should be trying more. broken. No! There is a serious delay on the flash drink. I don't remember if it was quite that slow in DS3. It was definitely slow in DS2. Maybe this is something we can speed up with dexterity. I don't know. Man, this second phase right now is kicking my butt. I was not really... Uh, I don't know. I was going to say I was not expecting there to be a death montage on the first boss, but let's be real. There was actually kind of a part of me that was expecting that. <laughs> because this is Elden Ring, and everything I've heard about this is that this is the hardest game ever. So far, fact check true. See, why am I not blocking there? What am I missing? Why is that not a block? Bro. It's not a not a block for some reason. I don't know. That thing does not hit the hardest. Got the first gravity death. God damn it. Ah, oh, what a nightmare, dude. What a nightmare. Well, thou art of passing skill. I'm gonna roll off the cliff if I'm not careful here. Shit. That was my last heal. How am I supposed to roll through that? Tell me. Somebody tell me. How am I supposed to roll through that? Need stamina. Yo! See, he does that short sword, right? Or, I don't know if it is... A sh He's got a staff in one hand, doesn't he? Whatever the fuck it is. He's, like, quickly jabbing me. And, like, Stunning me for just a second, keeping me from rolling, and then the hammer. Well, thou art a passing skill. Warrior blood must 
truly run in thy veins. I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. Don't know how I'm supposed to do it. Getting me every time. Put these Getting me every time. To rest. The other thing I have to keep in mind is if we're dying this much to the first boss that we are seriously taking on, it's probably a sign that, it, or it could be a sign that we are simply under leveled. You know, there's always the RPG thing of being not leveled up enough with the boss. Well, it was a kind of nice thing that I did a, a, a strong attack there because it it uh, kept me from taking that uh, dagger, that holy dagger to the face. God damn it. It is, the, the, the recovery from the flask is so long. Ridiculous how long it is. Especially coming off of Sekiro. I think that's another thing that I'm having trouble adjusting to. Sekiro flask drinks were so fast. Why are you hiding over in that corner? What the hell? Hate this guy. Hate him! Should have been attacking. Yeah, he hits you with the, the butt of his staff sometimes. Or knob or whatever the hell it's called. Fuck me. I thought I got hit. I hate that he's fighting in this corner. I don't know. It just feels wrong. What is he doing? What the hell was that? That was a greedy hit. Already down to one flask. Awesome. What the fuck? Oh, I fucking hate this guy. Motherfucker. <sighs> Should've gone for hits. He does leave himself pretty open during that attack, I gotta say. That's that's one that you should be taking advantage of, and we are probably not... I, well, more than probably, we're definitely not taking enough advantage of. Shit, I thought I had delayed that time. Stupid. Just start. Kill me now. Kill me now. Foolish ambitions to rest. That is such a, a delay. Put these foolish ambitions to rest. Put these foolish ambitions to rest. 
Too soon. Shit. Okay. Okay. Not focusing enough on dodging. Not focusing enough on his leaning into an attack. Getting better at recognizing some of them, but still so far. hate that he keeps backing up on me. So annoying. I did not think I was going to iframe that. Shit! Greedy. Fuck. Greedy. No, motherfucker, dude. I got out of rhythm, man. I got fucking out of rhythm. Motherfucker. We were using the skills there, which was nice. That was good. Saving those for the second phase is probably a better idea. We want that second phase to last as little as possible. That was the best one yet, though. Getting dodges on point. It's what Dark Souls is all about. It's what Elden Ring is going to be all about, isn't it? It's just like dodging at the right time. Imagine. Who knew? Who knew? That was supposed to be a dodge. Where was my roll? Okay. Pretend that one didn't happen. No, I thought I would roll out of that. Was that the first time I've seen that? Does he pull out a special move when he guard breaks you? Rolled a little late. This is just what Elden Ring is going to be, isn't it? Every single boss is going to be Orphan of Cause. Or I'm seriously under level and I am stubborn as fuck when I should be not doing this fight anymore. Probably the case. I hate how he backs away. I, I was blocking that, I swear to God. And then he's in this fucking corner. Get out of here, bitch. Get the fuck out here. Stop hiding in a little corner. Stop hiding in the corner like a little bitch.
backstep. I hate it. Thought he follows up with the short sword there. Whoa, come on, motherfucker. Oh, the back steps are the fucking worst, man. I'm getting so pissed right now. <laughs> I hate this guy. Fuck you. Fuck you. And the fucking horse you rode in on. God damn you. Get out of here. Get out of here with your fucking bullshit. Whoa, what? Did we finally do the fucking thing about breaking his stance? Okay, let's not fucking lose this. Fuck! Yo, we got a guard break or a stance break or something, and then we fell to pieces with four flasks. Still on the books. Goddamn. <laughs> Yo, I am losing my shit on the first boss in Elden Ring. And you all are here for it. <laughs> oh, shit. What? I don't know what I did wrong there. I don't know if I got my guard broken or stamina or something, but I was stuck. Whatever I was trying to do, roll. I was trying to roll. It wasn't, ha it was not happening. Motherfucker. Ah. Hey, that fucking short sword. I was drinking. My drinking apparently can get interrupted if I'm walking across the wrong terrain. I guess that's good to know. Fuck this shit. Motherfucker. Where was my roll? I swear to God. No fucking shit. Damn it. Ambitions to rest.
in thy veins. Tarnished. Oh, baby. Let's go. Okay. I was out of stamina. God damn it. Ah. We got another visceral guard break, repost, stance break. It's not guard break. Because we're being aggressive. That is definitely, I think, the pattern, the, the key commonality between these positive attempts is that we have been more aggressive. It's not quite Bloodborne aggressive, but it's definitely rewarded. Just going to town. Oops, I did not actually trigger the skill there, like I thought I was going to. I got my stance back in time, apparently. Too soon. My drink. Please roll for once in your fucking goddamn life. Motherfucker, dude. Everything just went fucking downhill. Everything fucking downhill and just a fucking because I fucking wouldn't fucking roll. Motherfucker. <laughs> you son of a bitch, dude. Just when I think I've got an opening. Oh, fuck. Please do the fucking skill. God damn. I deserve that one. I'm not triggering the skill. I'm I'm trying to press L2 and then R2, and I'm clearly not pressing them both at the same time, and so I'm sitting there holding my fucking stick like a dumbass. No! God damn. I'm just not rolling when I'm supposed to be rolling. I wish it would do more damage to you, but I'll take it. Fuck me.
Bleed. We gotta bleed. Great Tarnished. enemy feld. Motherfucker still had to get in the last fucking words. Fell Omen. Out of my damn game. We got a talisman pouch. Let's take a look at that. We got 12... 12k runes. Okay. Maybe tells me that we should not have been attempting this boss so quickly. <laughs> also that and the like 50 deaths that we've had already. I don't even know. I've lost count. What a clutch bleed to get at the very end. And I love that the visceral stance break mechanic is a thing once again. Very cool. Where is our new item? What is our new item? Let's see if we can find it here. Is it a key item? It is indeed. Increases talisman equip slots. As in more spells? Small withered bag knitted by hand, bestowed upon the ruling lord or those attempting to become lord by the elderly finger reader. Increases talisman equip slots. As the voices of the two fingers, finger readers are said to live lives eternal. And one is even supposed to have served as a wet nurse to royalty. Here we go with the wet nurse bit once again. What is it with Miyazaki and wet nurses? Okay. That, of course, is where we are going to wrap up this installment of Elden Ring. As we grab our... As we grab... Ah, we touch grace. I need all the grace that I can get after that unbelievable boss grind to start Elden Ring. But I have a feeling that I was just being so damn stubborn, not wanting to accept the fact that I should not be doing this boss yet. Because there is so much behind us. I mean, look at all this to, to explore. Okay, do you realize? I don't even know how long this is gonna take. I don't know how many episodes this is gonna be. How much this will be on camera versus off camera. Looks like there's like a telescope here. There's something here to check out. There's like a weird troll face right here. The troll face's ear is over here. Um, there's all kinds of shit to check out. There's a floating barrel out in the sea that I hadn't fucking seen. Like this map is already fucking crazy and this is just the first fucking zone. And we've only beaten the first fucking boss, which probably sh we shouldn't have been doing. But with that, we will, I said it already, but I'm going to say it again, wrap up this installment of Elden Ring. This game is going to be awesome and also a nightmare. Look at this view, though, and look, well, that's not really the view. This is the view, and this is the view. God damn. This game is absolutely gorgeous. What will be in store next time? I think we're going to be heading backwards to do some backtracking and explore some of the places that we just zipped on by. So what will we find in Limgrave next time? Tune in to find out. Thank you all very much for joining me oh, as I catch my breath here. And I hope to see you in the next one.